how to create clouds in Blender. My name is Irina and in this video you will discover how to create clouds using a three simple and easy methods. Let's jump straight to the video. One of the ways for creating clouds in Blender is by using metaballs. In contrast to meshes and surfaces which are explicitly described by vertices and control points, Meta objects are actually mathematical formulas that Blender instantly calculates. So what I will do now is I will get rid of everything that I have in my scene. So I will box select it and press it with X. Now I will press one and with shift and A, I will add a meta ball. Metas are fluid mercurial or clay like formations with a rounded shape, which is a very distinctive visual feature. Additionally, two meta objects start to interact with one another when they are in close proximity to one another. So if I duplicate it and if I move it around, you can see that they collide and they mix or merge just like water droplets do. But when they are later moved apart from one another, they revert to their former shape. So what we will do now is we are going to create a cloud-like object using the meta balls. So we are going to duplicate a couple of them and we are going to create a shape of a cloud. So I'm just going to duplicate a couple of them. Let's go with one more here and voila. So here I will, ha I have my cloud. I will select everything and scale it in Y axis. Now, once I do that, I'm going to press right click, convert to mesh. So we are converting these meta balls into the mesh. So now guys, if I go to edit mode, you can see the vertices which allow me to manipulate with this object. So for now, we will leave it as it is right here and we are going to hop on to modifiers tab. So here on the modifiers tab, we are going to add a subdivision surface modifier which will allow us to subdivide the mesh a couple of times or one time in this case. So I'm going to subdivide this mesh by one. So if I go to edit mode, you can see how it looks like and I'm going to apply the subdivision. So you can see how it looks like. So we add, just added a lower number of subdivision here on the mesh. Now we are going to be able to continue on with the, our modifiers. The next one is displace. So here we have the display modifier and you can see how it puffed up. So what we will do now is we are going to be adding a new texture. So basically the displace modifier displaces vertices in a mesh based on the intensity of a texture. So you can see now once I added the texture, it is basically like distorted. But now I will go here under the texture properties and I will change this texture to clouds. Basically, praline noise is represented as clouds. Here we will experiment with these all settings. Grayscale that you can see here, this is the standard noise that gives intensity. Then the color here, the noise gives an RGB value. Then here we have the depth. So the depth basically of the clouds calculation. So if I move it around, depth is changing. If I increase it, the depth is going to be lower and if I decrease it, it's going to be higher. Then we have the size. The size determines the dimensions of the noise table. So if I, for example, if I, for example, increase it, you can see that now the noise table is a little bit like larger. And if I decrease it, I will have a lot more of these little like folds in my cloud. So now guys that we are done with this, we are going to go to render view and let's see how it looks like. So basically what I did is I previously added an HDRI that you can also use. Then you can download it from polyheaven.com. Now that we've finished the first cloud, we are going to hop on and do the other one. So I'm going to select the cloud, shift D, duplicate and move it to the left side. I will select this one and here I will open this editor tab. I will change it to shader editor, which will allow me to use nodes. So I will add a new material and here I can see the two, uh, two default nodes. So the principal BSDF and material output. I will now select the principal BSDF and I will delete it. Then onto here, I will add a principal volume node. 
and then I will select it volume to volume because I want it to be projected as volume. So basically the principal volume shader combines all volume shading components into a single easy to use node such as this one. So here we have a lot of these like settings that we can work through. So the color for our principal volume is the volume scattering color, basically. You can choose whatever you color you want. So the next part is the density. So the density of the volume, you can increase it or decrease it. It depends on your liking. So I'm going to increase it to 2.2. Once I'm done there, I'm going to go to material properties. And here under settings, I have this surface displacement. Currently is on bump only, but I want it to be displacement only. So if you hover above it, you can see that it is basically so use true displacement on off surfaces only requires fine sub subdivision. Because we subdivided this mesh, it will look good. So now you can go always to modifier tab and you can change the strength of the displacement here on the modifier. And here we will have it. So basically this cloud is like cotton like cloud in a cartoon. And one thing only is that I added an HDRI which has like a pink pigment in it. Basically th that is why my clouds are pink, but in a real life they are white. So here always you can change the color of your clouds. You can make them whatever color you want. So right now I'm going to leave them as white. For the third cloud, I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to duplicate the first cloud that I modeled out at the beginning. Then I will zoom in and I will get rid of the displacement modifier. Here now I have only the meta ball that are converted into a mesh and I have a subdivision on it. So what I will do next is I will press shift A and I will add a volume empty. So we are going to be adding a volume object. You can create a volume object from add menu like here or dropping the VDB files into Blender. Volume objects are containers used to represent open VDB files in Blender. So once I added this object onto that, I'm going to add a modifier to it. So you can see here that I selected volume. Okay, onto there, I'm going to add a mesh to volume. So the mesh to volume modifier uses a mesh to create a new volume grid. Here I will select the object that I have here and the modifier we will add is to be on the empty, not on the object, but on the empty on this volume. So you can see now here that I have like slightly, uh, I can see slightly the volume of a cloud. So what I will do next is I will hide this meta ball too that uh, actually helped me to create this part. Now, once I did that, I will now go to render cycles. Here I can play with the density. So I am going to increase it a bit. So let's see to 5000 or we are going to add it to 2.2 as we did with the previous ones. Now, once I did everything, I'm going to add a volume displace. So it is basically going to do the same thing as we did in the previous two. So I'm going to add a this texture material and yeah, I can change the strength of, of it. And now here we can see the three types of clouds. So here we can see like stylized clouds. Here we can see like cartoonish cotton candy clouds. And here we have realistic clouds. So guys, you have reached the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed and like creating clouds. If you want to see more content like this, like, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more about Blender, check out our online academy, rendercraft.com with over 80 courses inside. The link will be in the description box down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!